Alright everybody, we're here at the Vortex Tethered Teach and Train and we got some Vortex Optics over here under this tent. We've got some saddle stuff over here. We got big trees over here. We're gonna learn how to do some saddle hacks in this video. We got a bunch of guys that do saddles a lot and have a lot better tips than we probably do, so we're gonna take advantage of that. Let's hack it up. <laughs> it's like a golf course. We're gonna hack it up. <laughs> and official hats to prove that they are in fact better in tethers than us. It's like a members only jacket. <laughs> These are hacked. The bottom, the bottom stick. I always have my stick set up so that the pins are gone from the bottom stick, so they can't catch on anything, they can't break off on anything, and that one always gets back to the bottom. And then this one's always set up so that it always stays on this side of the stack. So that when I'm climbing, I'll go to climb that tree, and I'll hang those sticks just like that. And then when I'm ready to grab my next stick, it's just a real easy matter of just pulling that one off. And my next stick's ready to go. Yeah, so first saddle hack is getting your sticks on the saddle. Right? And there are a couple different ways you can do that. I like these different little Kydex type hooks. Garrett made this one in true DIY sportsman fashion. I mean, what do you expect, right? So the guy's got to make his own. Uh, these are similar to the ones that are available online, but basically, as in your homemade stick, custom saddle, you just take a piece of paracord, run it through your stick, and then drop it down inside here. What's cool about these one sticks are they're so light, you can actually have two or three or four sticks all on one. Uh, just hook it in there, and then like Garrett was saying, you just pull them off one at a time as you're climbing. It's super easy, but much better. Something else that you know Garrett's done here much cleaner than I have, uh, but I filled my sticks with foam, expanding foam. Um, not that they weren't quiet to begin with, but that really helped quiet them down yeah. in case I'm, I'm, I tend to be a little clumsy in the woods, so uh, that worked out well for me. You can see what Garrett did here too, though, with this being on this side, if his sticks are hanging, he can kind of control them here. I see a lot of guys that will hang sticks back here, and if he's got his platform on, they're gonna to clang together too, so I'll he's- I'll still usually put my platform on the back, but that's, it's but totally separate, a matter of separate, Separating the, the metal they're contact. They're separated by the pouch. There's yeah. no metal to metal contact. Yeah, it's always nice to have, and I do the same. I like to have my sticks on either side, and then on my tailbone, I like to have uh, the platform, so there's less chance or almost no chance of them swinging around and, and hitting each other and making noise. Another way you can have these clip on is this is a little, I think somebody sells these, but Ernie, you're saying that this is a plumbing clip. You I can believe make it's a, for like PEX plumbing. So these will just clip right on there, and then this would just clip right onto your side. Like so. On your Molly. I did some noise testing with microphones and frequency analyzers and whatever else just to see if there was something that could take away any kind of high pitch noises more than anything else and it definitely seemed like the exterior contact surfaces like the style strips or if you wanted to wrap it with you know camel form bat wrap stuff like that tended to be the biggest bang for your buck but adding like the the foam to the inside like taylor did definitely doesn't hurt it makes it a little bit better um, so you could do everything I, all the mods that i did to my sticks for silencing them added like, I think in two ounces maybe to the full stack. Yeah. It was like, you can't even tell the difference. Yeah, and you have to be careful with what foam you get. We use the Loctite, Loctite foam. Yeah. Uh, that tends to be more airy, less dense. And so some of those other foams, Ernie, we were talking about some other ones yesterday. Yeah, great stuff's a little heavier. Yeah, yeah the, the Loctite was like literally like- It's like nothing. Maybe an ounce at yeah. most. Yeah. And that's, I mean, the great stuff is great for what it's intended for, but it's too dense. And so with this, you want a more, airy, more air-filled, open cell foam, and it, it just, it makes a better deal. Something else that, that I would say is a hack, or something that'll just make you more efficient in the saddle, is just keep the same system. Like, Garrett just knew exactly routine, where routine, that routine. Lyman's belt was going back into. That's probably his tree tether. But I like to keep my Lyman's belt on my left side, Lyman's left, keep it simple. And that way you just know exactly where it is, and, and that helps you as you continue to go through your process to just be consistent and smooth and quiet and know exactly what you're doing. Well, also, also the fact is, quick, you know, guys ask all the time, like, how fast can you get up in a tree and this and that, but the efficiency of doing the same thing and having the same methods, and like you're saying about his stuff being in the same spot, so you get to the tree, you're just going, it's just like tying your shoes, you just do it. You, you don't even have to think about where all your stuff is because it's in the same spot every time. And it's not even just that it's the same spot, it's the same order. Yep. Whatever's getting pulled out last is on the bottom, always. Yep. Whatever I get to the tree, 
be first. First thing that comes, first thing that comes out, that thing's being packed on the top of the pouch. Yep. Stack everything in the order that you're going to use it. I mean, and some of these things sound goofy, but when you're, you know, in the woods and, and time is of the essence, and when, you know, dark, maybe your headlamp's not charged or whatever, batteries are dead. You were up late at camp playing cards a little too late. You're a little foggy in the mind. Uh, it's important to just have everything set up ready to rock. Ernie, what are some of your favorite? Uh, well, now with the new clip thing for my sticks, that's going to be a big one for me. Makes it easier to hold that stuff on. Uh, I'm rough on equipment. I drop stuff all the time. So I found this thing the other day. Let me get it off here. It's the simplest dang device ever, but it's girth hitched on my saddle all the time. And uh, I made a loop for my phone so that my phone is always attached to my hip and I can't drop it or lose it. The funny, the funny thing you say about that, I've been out scouting, I don't know how many times, you know, and I've actually found like three or four phones where guys drop in the woods just randomly. So I'd say that just for about anything. Well, and, and so I'm guilty as much as anybody of, you know, playing a game, text, and all of a sudden animal comes in and I like to just quick toss it into my sis holler on the side. But the reality is if, I, if it's not going or whatever, I can just drop it and keep going and it's not going to be a big deal. So that's kind of nice. The other thing I do um, is I like to keep track of how high I am in a tree. So on my uh, bow pull-up rope, it's marked every foot for the whole height. So as I'm going up, I know when I'm going to start running out of rope. You know, because the last thing I want to do is be climbing and my bow's clanging around underneath me or whatever, or whatever the thing might be. So I just, it's a tape measure that I made out of my thing, and it doesn't cost anything to have that ability. Yeah, what are those two things called their name? Uh, so this is just a Doyle's hunting hoist. Uh, for me, I like the webbing version because if I'm lowering down a heavy pack, it's less likely to burn my, my fingers or have any problems. And honestly, I can't remember who made this, uh, but it's it's a Did you, did you get that off of Etsy? No, I think like it came up. 7-Eleven buy. Yeah, I think I'll take it two slices Amazon of breakfast pizza something. and this dangle dongle. <laughs> yeah. I was hunting with a younger individual in Florida this spring, and he had one on his saddle. I was like, I gotta have that. And I went home and ordered it the next day. But it's like, it, you know, I collect ideas from all over the place. So. It's cool, you can learn so many things, like, you know, guys that come out to events like this and they have their own system, uh, and I see something that they're doing that I might want to apply to myself, and I find it to be a better uh, use of what I'm doing, like... That clip like on that the clip. sticks. I haven't seen that. I got that from a guy uh, at the James Sporting Good Teach and Train about a month ago. Yep. Somebody had him, and he was walking around with sticks hanging off his hip, and I just like, that is, that's slick. I'm going to get one. Yeah, and I'd say, like, the best thing you could do is play with your gear, at home, at ground level, kind of go through, it's like hunting confetti, uh, go through your setup and like know what you're gonna do so you're not learning when you're in the woods and, and just have a system uh, prepared and kind of think through the process that you're in. All right, so when I'm climbing, especially with these one sticks, one similarity that I'll have, no matter how many sticks I'm gonna climb with, I could have six hanging off this stack but the bottom stick in my stack doesn't have the little pins. I took them out just because if there's nothing there, there's nothing to break. And the top pin in the stack will always have a paracord loop here. And then I can just add sticks in the middle to get whatever size stack I want to do. I usually put on the bottom stick when I'm at ground level, but then as I'm climbing, all I have to do is reach down. I usually just take two hands, fingers underneath the stick, thumbs here, and I'll just lift and it's absolutely still silent, super easy. You can do that with your eyes closed, but it's nice just to be able to have it in front of you to where you can see. And I'll go ahead and hang that stick on the tree. And then, in terms of the platform, I usually have that platform hanging off the back center of my saddle. And the reason I have it there is there's just one pouch kind of in the way between the sticks and the platform so that no matter how much movement I'm gonna make, there's a little bit of a buffer there to help prevent any kind of metal to metal contact. And then when I'm ready to hang that platform, I can just reach back, grab the loop off the hook, and bring it right around and attach it to the tree. So just like with the sticks, I'll have a loop of paracord, or I think in this case, this is just some small, you know, zingit or similar that you'd use for camping guy wire line. And really, there's no reason, I could hang it on my left hip probably just as easily. The only reason I don't is just from a 
force a habit because I used to have some sticks hanging off one side, some sticks hanging off the other. But now that I have all my sticks in one stack, I could just as easily probably climb like this. I like having that little bag between it though. Yeah, it's nice. And then, I mean, with the way that I have the bag set up too, that front pocket, it's nice, easy access for some extra milkweed. And I can just keep feeding that thing with more. And then the order of operations that I'll have my stuff in, the lineman's rope on this side is always the first thing that comes out. Beneath that would be the tether, so when I'm ready to use that, I can use that. And then I have the piss strap that would be the first thing I'd pull out of that side. And then once the hiss strap is set up and I got all my bow and pack and everything ready to go, the last thing I'll usually pull out is just that recliner strap. And then when I put that stuff away, it goes back in in the same order it came out. Everything's in the same order, so if I'm climbing in the dark, I know exactly where everything is, and when I go to grab for it, it's right there. Hey guys, uh, Carl Kasuth here with Tethered, and some of the guys wanted to see the single stick, climb, single stick climbing uh, demonstration. So all I have out here is the triple tree tower today. Um, so we're gonna make do with it. This is gonna be the shortest single sticking climb in history. <laughs> so uh, yeah, these are only like 12 foot tall, but you'll be able to get the gist of it. Kind of go over the rig real quick. Everything I'm wearing is all I need to, uh, to do the single stick climb. Um, I can basically go out into the woods, climb the tree, hunt, and then descend with everything I have on. The only thing in addition uh, that I'll take with this is uh, I've been running the XL Predator platform. Because my, my kit is so pared down, I was just like, why not? I don't need the XL, but because what I'm wearing here weighs about 5.2 pounds, I was like, why not? So um, I, I benefit using the extra real estate on the Predator. Um, it would be in or on my pack, depending on which pack I'm running. Um, but we'll get into this. So these are the new roll-up pouches. They're gonna be coming in uh, just a couple weeks, I hope. Um, these are designed for single sticking, but you can use them for regular saddle hunting as well. But you can see that's what it's designed for is to hold that extra rope. Basically look at this as a, a 40 foot tether. Um, most tethers are six to eight feet. This is a 40 feet piece of rope and I'm using it like you would a regular tether, but I'm only utilizing about six, six and a half feet during the climb while I'm hunting. And then when it's time to descend, then I'll drop the rest of it down and I'll rappel down the tree. This is a prototype uh, stick. Had a little discussion with Ernie last night, so hopefully we're gonna be doing a limited run of these next year. Um, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, basically what this is, I took a tethered one stick and I cut six inches out of it and uh, put it back together. So disclaimer time. You're gonna see some stuff in this video that doesn't exist. Um, it's straight up DIY stuff. Don't do this. Don't be like me. Don't do this stuff, okay? So yeah, don't be cutting your sticks in half and try putting them back together and hoping for the best, okay? Uh, just just don't do it. So yeah, th this, this will be hopefully commercially produced next year. Um, so basically what I do, you just saw how I pulled this out of, out of that pouch. Uh, first thing I do when I walk up to a tree is I'm gonna look up real quick, see where I wanna be, see if I got a hard leaner, what branches I'm dealing with. I just really wanna locate where I wanna be in that tree and I'll set my bow down um, in correlation to where I wanna be. Cause if I got a leaning tree and I'm gonna be four foot, hunting four foot over from where I actually start climbing, I need to make sure I set my bow over there so I can fish it up. Um, I don't climb with my bow attached to my body. Um, I don't like having anything attached to me when I'm climbing. Um, because one of the benefits of using a saddle with any climbing system is that you can seek out these trees that you just generally wouldn't with a climbing tree stand or a mobile tree stand. You can get in some really goofy, gnarly trees. So if I'm up in a tree and I'm going through all these branches and stuff, the last thing I want is a bow attached to me that I have to work through all these branches um, to get up to me, especially if it's dark. So bow weighs on the ground and I'm gonna fish it up and we'll go over my bow pull up rope um, whenever I get up there. So. First thing I'll do is set the bow down, pull the stick out. I'm gonna put this thing where the bottom step is about head high. Um, I'm 5'9 on a good day, so I'll put it about six foot. I'll install it, block it down, and you can see where that puts this, this bottom aider. So this is a, a attached three-step aider. Um, it's kind of semi-permanent. Uh, the design of the components on the one stick it lends itself to um, me being able to actually put a cinch hitch on this thing. It doesn't even have to be so permanently sewn to this. I can take this off, put it on another stick, put a different aider on, it doesn't matter. Um, just because of the way it's kind of, it's kind of, it's like a girth hitch, I guess, on the end of these um, 
these uh, foot, foot pegs here. So there's the aider. In general, I'll set it to where it's right around knee height, right there. So that's the first thing I do. Then I will get the business end of the, the kit out. Now when I'm climbing, I'll pull the utility bridge out to right around in there. Overall, that's probably a 13, 14 inch bridge. I run it fairly short when I'm climbing because I like to keep um, my Madrox safeguard and everything real close so I'm not stretching out. And then this is the Madrox safeguard. This is what makes this whole process possible. If this component didn't exist, I wouldn't, I wouldn't single stick. I can't imagine trying to single stick coming down a tree. That just sounds like a nightmare to me. This allows me to rappel down a tree. If you're familiar with uh, the Ropeman one or the Kong Duck, Kong Duck um, ascenders, uh, they're designed to hold you in place and have easy adjustments on your lineman's rope or your tether while you're in the tree. Uh, this does the exact same thing as those, but it has a lever on the side of it. And this allows me to disengage this cam right here by applying pressure on that. So I can disengage that, and then I have my control hand down here, and this is what allows me to repel to come out of the tree. So that's gonna get clipped on to my bridge. We'll close the gate. All right, again, disclaimer time. <laughs> this is nothing commercially available. Uh, this is, a, it's called a lap link. It's a 3 8 inch lap link. Um, this is designed to repair chain. If you break a chain, um, you can get these at hardware stores and stuff, and it's designed to put the two ends of the chain that you broke in it, smash it together and weld it up. Um, so it's a solid piece of steel, very strong, but it's not something that is accepted, I guess. It hasn't been vetted, you know, in, in the climbing world. Um, so it's something I started using last year. I've had really good success with it. I'm very comfortable with it, so it's, it's what I'm using. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna climb up here, and I'll put the, the tether around up there so this is this is how i climb right here i'm set up here i just throw this over my neck and i'm ready to start climbing so when you're using aiders you want to make sure that you're going toe to tree when you step into an aider um, you want to make sure your foot is deep inside that aider and that you're you're consciously burying that toe against that tree um, so you don't have kick out um, i don't use i won't use an aider that has more than three steps on it uh, because to me at that point you're getting too long uh, too long with it and you're gonna have a lot of potential kick out on it uh, the three-step aiders seem to be really comfortable um, but if you're just conscious with it and you, you bury that toe to the tree you're gonna be fine just bury the toe to the tree second one toe to tree toe to tree and then I get up on top of the stick like I said this is gonna be the shortest climb ever <laughs> With the rope, I have 40 feet of rope in here. And with the 40 feet of rope, I can hunt at about 33, 34 feet um, at my feet. So yeah, at my feet at the platform, if I'm stretching it out, maximizing my rope, I can get 34, 35 feet. So when I get to my, let's say I've, I've completed the climb, um, what I want to do is I'm going to pull out my, my bow pull-up rope and I'm going to put it on here and I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, but since I'm out of tree, I can't actually show you an actual move. Um, I can just kind of tell you about it. So at this point, um, I'm ready to make a move. I utilize this system like you would a, a climbing tree stand. Think of the, the stick as the bottom part of the climber and my saddle as the top part. So I'm just shifting my weight to the saddle. I'm going to rotate to the side of the tree and I'm going to hook the bottom of the stick with my toe. And I just lift it up. I'm going to hold it right there. I disengage it. And I'm just, I'm just hanging out. I'm totally relaxed. Um, a lot of this is just about trusting the gear, you know, getting used to the gear and just trusting it, you know, so I'm, I'm not expending any energy right here and I'm good to go. So then I'm gonna take the stick and I'm gonna move it as close as I can to my loop. I'm gonna put it back on. I'm gonna reseat it. Now look where that bottom aider is. Drop my foot right into it. I'm gonna rotate around again, toe to tree. You gotta be very conscious of that and this is difficult because there's no bark on this. Now I can't go any higher, but what I would do is I would start walking up this aider like I did down there and I would 
move this loop up as I climb. The, the most important thing when you're single sticking is you don't want to introduce any slack into the system, into the climb, if you can keep from it. So I want to advance that loop as much as I can with every step I take, keeping that good tension in there. Again, I'll take it all the way up, pull out any slack I have, and then sit back into the saddle and then move the, uh, move the stick again. So that's how you would progress uh, for the climb. I'm gonna move this back down so I can stand on it for a second. All right. All right, so let's say I'm at hunting height. Um, I'm done climbing. I'm gonna pull out my bow pull-up rope. It's a pretty simple thing, but it's actually a key component to this, uh, this system. This is a gutted paracord, that's all it is. I've just taken the core out of some uh, regular paracord. I've got a hook here on the bottom. That's what I drop down and I'll fish my bow up with. But this hook here at the top, this is a locking S-beaner. Um, you could use a smaller, a small carabiner. Um, I really like this S-beaner because I can lock it in place and not have to worry about that gate coming open. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clip this right into the rope, right behind my scaffolding hitch, my knot. I'm gonna lock that in place. That's gonna live there during the entire hunt. And so then I will take my hook and I'll, I'll hook my bow and I'll fish the bow up here and put it on. So um, at this point, I'm gonna reach in, I'm gonna grab my hitch strap for my gear. The hitch strap is like the first thing I put on. And the reason is, is because I have my platform um, on my pack. And so I hang my, uh, my pack from the, the hitch strap. So hitch strap goes on, pack goes on, platform comes out. I'll put the platform on. One of the beauties about using the safeguard is if I need to uh, make an adjustment when I'm up here, I'm, I need to be at a different angle around the tree, I can just drop myself down a little bit and I can get down here and I can work where I need to be and move things around. So I can jump over here and I can work on my, with my platform over here, do whatever I need to do. And then just a matter of cinching myself back up to here. So that's pretty much the gist of the climbing part of it. My climbing method, it'll pull double duty as a little bit of an extra platform. Um, I'll have my, my XL set right here like this and I'll put my, the top part of my stick even with that, with that platform. So if I got to swing around the tree on that weak side, um, it just adds, it's a little extra assist right there. So coming down, um, you pretty much just reverse everything. I'll actually put my platform away and so I can transfer my, my weight back over here to my stick, get the platform off, put it in the pack, put my pack on. This uh, little gear tie right here, I didn't talk about it. Um, it just helps keep this loop in place when you're climbing. So when I do start climbing, if I have a little bit of slack in the system, because this uh, lap link is so heavy, it doesn't try to pull the, pull the loop down. This just keeps it in place. I mean, it'll, it'll stay right there. Um, so when I'm going to come down and make sure that's loose, I'm going to drop my remaining line. I'm going to unhook it from that, that pouch. And this was figure eighted and put in there. I'm going to drop that down to the ground. And then I'm going to lower myself just a few feet. Again, this is where the safeguard's really beneficial. I can put myself right here with this stick. So I'm not reaching, I'm not extending. If I need to come down a little bit farther, just lower myself a little bit farther. So when I'm, when I'm dismantling this and I'm pulling everything down, another benefit is that when I'm done, when I walk away from this tree, I am 100% ready to go climb another tree. I could step 10 feet over and start climbing another tree because my kit is 100% ready to go. So there's my stick. I've got a, a S beaner with one of the gates removed on the back of my saddle. It's just gonna clip in there and it's gonna ride down with me. So as far as going down the tree, you're just gonna have your control hand here on your, on your rope, just kind of keep it in line with your bridge. And this lever on the safeguard, I'm just gonna start wrenching on it. And you got ultimate control on this thing. You can really finesse it, you can do whatever you want. You know, you can, you can kick out, you can go full blown SWAT. You know, <laughs> you want it just because of how frisky you're feeling and how quick you wanna get to the ground. Um, you know, you can just kick off and jump down. So when I hit the ground, I'm gonna remove 
this carabiner. I'll drop it in a pocket so I don't lose it. The safeguard comes off. I'll drop it in the pocket. So now all I have is this, this actually fell a little bit on its own, which is fine when you're done. Um, I'm gonna pull on the bow pull-up rope and I'm gonna hinge this away from the tree. So if this was a clean tree with no branches, this thing would just fall to the ground and I would unhook it and roll it up. But let's use that strut, that angle there as a branch. So that was the last branch I went around. So it's falling uh, down to that. So I'm just gonna keep pulling this. The head's gonna come down. The tail will kill, keep feeding up all the way through this, up and around the branch and then fall down to the ground. And then the whole system is down. So I'll unhook this and drop down the ground. The tail is going to whip around, and that's it. So whenever, so now I have two lines on the ground. That's that's all I have to put away. Everything gets figure aided. It's really simple. Uh, for the main line, I'm going to go over my wrist and to my elbow, and I'm going to figure eight this. And you can get really good at this. It's just a little bit of practice. You'll get to where you can do it in the dark. So when I figure eight it, I'm going to leave about six, six and a half feet left. I'll show you why here in a minute. I'm going to pop this off my elbow. I'm going to take that figure eight rope. I'm going to fold it in half. I'm just going to go back into the roll-up pouch. I'll pull out my carabiner and my safeguard. I'm going to reassemble my rig. So that's completely 100% ready to go. Drop that in that top part of the roll-up pouch. Gather up that. It goes in there. My stick. Rides right here. That. Go back in the transport mode with the utility bridge, like that. Bow pull up rope. Same deal, gonna do a figure eight. We're gonna do thumb to pinky. Drop that in there like that. And then just we're gonna start figure eight. And the figure eights, you know, just allow you to drop these lines without them getting tangled up uh, consistently. You just, this is, it works really, really well. And I, I, I had, I've never had any trouble with it. It doesn't seem to matter if I'm using a skinny line like this or a heavier rope. It, it all seems to work really well. So I popped off my thumb and finger. It goes back over here. Now I'm running another roll-up pouch over here. I've just been playing with it, seeing how it works. Even though I'm not utilizing big rope over here. And uh, it seems to be doing pretty well. Since that down and I'm ready to walk away. Um, pick up the bow and take off. So that's it. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this, and uh, see you on the next one.